it's lovely to be here. This is my first time in this town. It's my first time in North Dakota. It's my first time doing a TEDx talk. So I'm really excited to connect with you all. And thank you for making me feel so welcome. So my name is Samata Pattinson, and I am a British-born Ghanaian who currently lives in Los Angeles. I am the CEO of Black Pearl. For the past 13 years, I have worked at the intersection of fashion, sustainability, and culture working on incredible projects such as writing the Sustainable Fashion Guide for the Oscars, delivering really cool educational initiatives on climate and fashion for Maggie Baird, Billie Eilish and Phineas, and teaching on sustainability at academic institutions like Yale and Cambridge University. I love this subject. I love the idea of helping people understand that the things we wear have an impact on people and planet all around the globe. And I'm really, really excited to be here with you all today. My passion is helping people to find the place where the global apparel industry, with its workforce of over 430 million people, intersects with apparel and intersects with sustainability. I believe that the conversations we could be having and should be having, we're not having. I feel like the fashion industry falls slightly short when it comes to inspiring people to see thoughts of sustainability, to see thoughts of intellect, to see thoughts of relevance. I think so many people think that fashion is inaccessible or exclusive, or something that they might have a passing interest in. But what about when it comes to clothes? What is one thing that everyone in this room and watching has in common? Each day, we do two things. The first, if we're lucky, and the second, almost without thinking. We eat and we put on clothes. Humans have been wearing clothes for between 100,000 to 500,000 years. And we've explored the relationship of clothes through different lenses, like social society and social class. If you watch one of my favorite shows right now, which is Queen Charlotte, you'll understand that at a certain point in time, Clothing was regulated and implied social status. Nobility wore really extravagant luxury clothes, and other people weren't allowed to wear them. So we know that relationship exists. But what about the relationship our clothing has with other things? What would you do if I told you that the clothing you wear and that you put on, consciously or subconsciously, is linked to human rights and social justice? is linked to plastic pollution and biodiversity loss, to innovation and technology, to health and wellness. That 20% of global clean water pollution is caused by washing synthetic clothes. That we are using non-renewable resources to the extent of 98 million tons every single year just to make the clothes that we wear. That 80% of the clothes we wear are made by brown and black skinned people or that we already have enough clothing made to dress the next six generations, but we're still producing 80 billion pieces each year. The things that we wear would not exist without a literal thread to bring them together. And I feel passionately about threading together social conversations, changing business as usual, and showing how if we design for better, we can actually have a sustainable fashion industry. Our clothing is a canvas for really beautiful forms of self-expression. But let me explain why our clothing also has a lot to answer for. On an environmental side, the way that we produce and create clothing impacts biodiversity and ecosystems. It's connected to deforestation and a very intense use of natural resources. It contributes to water pollution, as I mentioned, and we create something between 8 to 10% of global greenhouse gas emissions just by how we grow our raw materials, how we move them around the world, and how we wash them and get, get rid of the dirt in our clothes. On top of that, there's a saying in some parts of the world where our clothing is made that you can tell what color is in season in the fashion industry by the color of our local waters. That's the extent to which the way we produce clothing impacts other communities. The Sitaram River in West Java, Indonesia, has 1,000 textile factories lining its bank where it dumps toxic waste. And then fashion also has an impact on the social side as well. Obviously, people make our clothes, but we also have issues of worker exploitation, gender inequality, and discrimination too. 
And also, when tragedies strike the world, they strike our industry as well. When COVID hit, 98%, that's nearly 100%, 98% of fashion brands refused to pay for orders that they had already placed and that had already been made. That left garment workers isolated and without job security. We're even having more honest conversations about the impact that clothing has on our health and well-being. If you knew that 8,000 synthetic chemicals are used to make our clothing, it might understand why chemicals showed up in a child's urine sample after wearing an item of clothing just once, several days later. Can you see why these conversations matter? Look, I go into a room and I try to explain that I work at the intersection of fashion, culture, and sustainability, and I know people struggle to see how a single choice that they make might have a bigger impact. So I try and connect those dots for them. For the ocean lover, I'll say, oh, did you know that 35% of ocean plastic is created by the way we wash synthetic clothes? For the feminist, I'll say, did you know that 80% of the clothes we wear are made by women who are often overworked, underpaid, and underage. For the mathematician, I'll say, did you know that in order to make clothes and grade patterns, we rely on mathematical equations? That to turn a flat template into a 3D garment, we rely on geometric principles like shape, angles, and curves? For the human rights activist, I say, do you know that after surveying 250 fashion businesses, it was found that 99% just didn't disclose whether their workers were paid livable wages. Can you see why these conversations are important? If we don't engage in these conversations, we won't challenge business as usual, and it will continue. If we normalize fashion influencers as young as six years old, teaching other young people that what they buy and wear is just for a moment and can be easily disposed, then we won't teach young people that empowerment can come through learning skills like making and mending and DIY. We won't teach them that what they can learn can sometimes far surpass what they can buy. And we won't teach them that the push for consumerism can impact their mental health and self-esteem. I believe that teaching how we make and reverencing and really respecting the fact that it takes people to make clothes will help other people see that our solutions are not all found in what we buy and what we take home. So how do we bring this impact home? For me, that's where culture comes in. Typically, the fashion industry sees culture as a way to make money. Oh, there's this group of people wearing this style of clothing. Let's do a line of that. Oh, there's this other group of people with these prints on their clothing. Let's do a line of that. I feel like we sometimes look at culture as a way to make a commercial income instead of understanding the people around us. Culture is not a, a currency. It's a commitment to better understand other people. If we consider culture and lenses like age, race, gender, socioeconomics, faith, disability, and we see how people who live within these bodies, shapes, and experiences experience and interact with clothing, we might start to do things slightly differently. We might make decisions that are centered on sustainability. We might see that as we travel the world and we look at things like embroidery, that those embroidery patterns have significance in different cultures. In Japan, a specific style of embroidery means you reinforce and you mend your clothing, but it also teaches people to be resourceful and frugal. It teaches people to value what they have. In Ghana, we have cultural symbols called adinkra symbols, but they also teach us philosophical messages about how we live with nature, that we should respect the things around us. For so many cultures around the world, what they wear is telling a story about who they are and how they see the world, and we can learn from that. With a fashion industry that is stockpiling clothing in the Chilean desert or in Cantamanto markets in Ghana, we have an opportunity to slow down how we buy, we have an opportunity to think differently about how we consume. The fashion industry already has so many of the answers. We know about textile innovation, we know about material innovation, we know about different ways to make our clothing, and we know that we can educate citizens about what they're wearing. We know we can even call out brands. I want to leave you with this one thought. The clothing that we wear all comes from somewhere. It comes from farms and fields and forests, and it uses and impacts our air and water. It means something. And we have the solutions to make better. It takes four hours to a few days to make a pattern. 
It takes a few hours to a few hundred hours to sew a piece of clothing together. But it always surprises me that it takes 100 meters or several thousand meters of thread to connect that clothing and make it into a physical garment. It often is a case that the things we don't really pay attention to and we don't look at are the things that connect us all. We don't need more clothing. We already have enough clothes for six generations. We need more conversation, we need more connection, we need more culture, and we need to look for the thread more. Thank you.